Team Keep It Clean, how y'all doing? Hopefully better than I am. Reason I say that is because this is a very special video that we got coming up. Got a very, very special guest, a very good friend of mine. And in this video, we're going to talk about the Baltimore Ravens draft picks. And he breaks them down like only he can because he is one of the best at it. He knows his stuff. Uh, but me... I don't know my stuff and I don't know my settings and in this video I made a big mistake I accidentally had the mic instead of the USB mic picking up my sound I had it coming from the computer mic so it's gonna be a little bit echo you can still hear me but it's just not gonna sound as crisp so my apologies for that I hope you all can still enjoy the video his sound sounds great and he you want to hear him a lot more than you want to hear me so that's what's more important but my apologies for the settings uh, the audio settings in this video i hope you all can still enjoy it but make sure you subscribe to the channel turn your notifications on leave a like on the video and then go subscribe to his channel and leave likes on his video and give him good feedback on what you like about his channel but without further ado team keep it clean i appreciate y'all i appreciate y'all patience and i appreciate you guys being willing to bear with many of the mistakes that i make on a daily basis i love you i appreciate you enjoy the show Team Keep It Clean, very, very special guest in the building. Been a long time since we said that, so we had to bring on somebody extra special for this special occasion. There's a lot of specials in there, but uh, we got my guy Jason from Huddled Up Films in the building. And, of course, the NFL draft has come and went, and that's a lot of people's favorite time of the year, uh, including yours. Um, and we want to take a, a much deeper dive into some of these Ravens draft picks and maybe some undrafted guys too, uh, and some possible additions that the Baltimore Ravens can make to their team to make them even stronger. But first, before before we get into it, how are you? And I appreciate you coming on again. Oh, it's my pleasure. My pleasure. I'm doing well. Uh, new animal in the house, as I was just telling you. So uh, some, some fun times around here, some adjusting. But uh, draft's over, so a little bit sad. Now, I don't want to say draft is my favorite time. My favorite time is when the Ravens win, or oh, okay. especially in the playoffs. But uh, draft season is uh, uh, close to my heart, as you know. I got you, man. Uh, so, yeah, that, I think that would be all of our favorite time of the year when Ravens win. Because when the Baltimore Ravens win, it shows that, especially when draft picks uh, show their stuff, it, it shows that the whole process, it worked out, and the whole process was worth it, uh, and everything turned out for the better. Now. Um, the Baltimore Ravens draft this year, it started off with a corner. And for some people, that was a surprise selection. Some people expected it. But the Baltimore Ravens got Nate Wiggins uh, out of Clemson. Um, now, I've, I've, of course, already shared my thoughts with Team Keep It Clean on Nate Wiggins. But you, as somebody that's much more of an expert, uh, much more uh, detail-oriented when it comes to the film study of these prospects, what do you get out of Nate Wiggins? How do you feel he fits in? with the Baltimore Ravens secondary and just their defense overall. This year, it's going to be interesting. Maybe he's worked into the rotation with Marlon and Brandon Stevens. Of course, Kyle Hamilton plays in the slot a lot. You still have Arthur Millette. So I'm not sure exactly how his playing time will work, especially during the beginning of the season. We saw Marlon get worked in, Jimmy Smith get worked in, uh, all these other first-round corners that the Ravens have had. But long-term, I think that this was a great move for the Ravens because Brandon Stevens, a free agent, Marlon's contract and he's getting older is getting getting uh, more expensive every year mm -hmm. and it's hard to find engraving guys that can turn and run like Nate Wiggins so we are talking about a press corner a number one corner Nate Wiggins can play in press coverage he can play in off coverage he's got good instincts and he's just you know tall at six feet and fast and uh, that's always a benefit so you're getting a, a number one type corner that was pushed down the board because of all the offensive linemen and the six quarterbacks that went before before uh, the Ravens picked. So in all, I think it was a great value, a good player. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that he's more physical than people give him credit for. He knows mm -hmm. his body build. You know, he's not going to go and try to tackle these guys head up and, uh, you know, pad to pad, but he will come up and cut you down, uh, you know, go for low, go low. And uh, I think it's a great pick for the Ravens long-term. And it's going to be one of those things in the offseason when Brandon Stevens is being courted by other teams that we're going to be really happy 
that we have Nate Wiggins under contract for the next five years. Oh, and I like that. I like that you brought out uh, Marlon Humphrey and Jimmy Smith, too, uh, because those are the more recent uh, Baltimore Ravens first round selections at the cornerback position. And they were both questions. I, I remember, especially when the Ravens drafted Marlon Humphrey, a lot of people were like, man, what are they drafting a the cornerback for? We already said at the cornerback position and it ended up working out uh, in a big way. So I'm looking forward to it now going into this draft. There was a lot of talk. Ravens need to fix, enhance, make better their offensive line because, of course, they traded away Morgan Moses to the Jets. Uh, they lost John Simpson to the Jets. Uh, they lost Kevin Zeitler, not to the Jets, but to the Detroit Lions. So they went through a lot of roster turnover uh, on the offensive line. Uh, they did bring in uh, Josh Jones from the Texans. Uh, but a lot of people wondering, like, all right, what's going to be next when it comes to the offensive line? Insert second round pick, Roger Rosengarden. How you feel about him? I really liked him. I had him higher on my board than than most. He was the 60th ranked player on my board, and um, in the mocks and everything. And I just went on with Sarah Ellison. Was she was kind enough to come on the channel? I played a pre-draft clip of my thoughts on him, and it was basically, hey, I'm seeing him go in the fourth round in a lot of drafts fifth round. I'm not seeing him in any top 100 pick uh, lists, but I really like him. And I think he's a great fit uh, for Todd Munkin and he's got really good upside. So I was happy that the Ravens were able to address uh, offensive tackle within the first two, uh, two picks. And I think really with the third round pick, they would have liked to have gotten a guard, uh, but there was a run on guards, maybe like nine or 10 offensive linemen, I think uh, that were taken between our second round pick and our third round pick. But Roger Rosengarten himself, I think, has a high upside, which is what I love about him. And Graven, I think he profiles better as a left tackle than even a right tackle because his feet are that good. His recovery skills are that good. It's one thing to be athletic in a straight line, but he's got this lateral kind of quickness where if somebody counters him up or Euro steps him or spin moves or any of those moves back to the inside where he's got the feet to be able to mirror someone and um, I wasn't sure that he was a Ravens type pick because they usually like guys with superior arm length. So if 34 inches is the baseline for arm length for a tackle, the Ravens like going 35 inches. They, they like longer athletes at the tackle position. Rosengarden is 33 and a half, but he makes up for his lack of length uh, with his feet, with his quickness. So just imagine a highly athletic. And then when you talk in a run game, being able to block in any scheme. So a lot of the zone runs that we're going to run with Derrick Henry inside zone, outside zone, you want him to climb to the second level. His mobility allows him to do all that. So I think he's a really good fit in Munkin's offense compared mm -hmm. to like if we were still in Greg Roman offense and just trying to knock people off the ball, maybe a, he wouldn't be as good of a fit as he is in this offense. Okay, I like that. And that's good to hear, especially the part uh, where he talks about he's good enough to be a really good left tackle because uh, something that I said going into the draft is that I felt that the Baltimore Ravens, they needed to get a left tackle of the future uh, in this draft. Will Roger Rosengarden be that? Only time will tell. But something that time told uh, was the Baltimore Ravens losing a lot of players this offseason. And one of my favorite players in the NFL uh, after years and years of hoping and wishing that he was going to be a Baltimore Raven, it finally happened last offseason. That was Jadavian Clowney signing with the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, he, I loved him, loved his game, always have. Uh, he was really good edge set, a really good run defender, and did his thing as a pass rusher too and was very, very productive for the Baltimore Ravens as a pass rusher, getting nine and a half sacks and getting his nice little bonus as well. But the offseason came and Jadavian Clowney, went he went to the panthers went to go pay, play back home uh so that left a, a hole there and with the ravens entering this offseason there was a lot of question marks because temporarily we had also lost kyle vanoy uh david ajabo he has been productive when he's played but he just hasn't played that much and with adafe away uh we're just waiting on him to really turn that corner and emerge into something serious it, it seems like it's getting there he's not all the way there yet but he's on his way uh, so the Baltimore Ravens ended up bringing back Kyle Vinoy. Um, They still had Tavius Robinson, Tony Malik Ham. Can't forget about those two as well. But uh, they went to the draft, and they drafted Adisa Isaac. And what's funny about this draft pick, and what's actually special about this draft pick, is that I was actually in the stream with you in your stream, your live stream during the draft, uh, when they selected Adisa Isaac. And you had literally, right before they drafted him, 
you were just talking about him and talking about his skill and talking about how he could possibly be a fit with the Baltimore Ravens, and then boom, they ended up selecting him. So how do you feel he fits in with the Baltimore Ravens? You know, one talent alone, I think it was a great pick. How he fits in, I think, is the biggest question because – you know, you mentioned all the edge players that we have, and, and Malik Harrison also plays a key oh, role yeah, on the edge. Uh, Malik Harrison is our run stuffing. If the other team brings in a fullback or a blocking tight end, Malik Harrison runs on the field, and he sets that strong side. So how Adisa Isaac fits in this year, I'm not sure. But the reason that I was talking about him right before uh, he was picked and you were on the live stream was because he was just way high up on the board of players that were left, in my opinion. So I don't know where he was on the ESPNs and the NFL networks and stuff like that, but I thought he would have went somewhere in the second round or beginning of third. I didn't think he'd be there at the end of the third because Adisa Isaac can do a little bit of everything. Uh, he has dip in his pass rush, so he's not linear. Uh, like we, we see a, a way struggle with being able to get low and get around the corner early in his time here in Baltimore. Tavius Robinson's a straight-up type of rusher too. Adisa Isaac has got some dip in his pass rush. He has strong hands, so he can set a physical edge. I would say Adisa Isaac is one of those prospects at the college level where he was pretty good at everything. So he didn't have like this super strength. He didn't have this super weakness. He was just a really good player. And um, how he fits in this year, I'm not sure. You know, I, when you were on the stream, we were kind of calling for Devontae Walker, which is, of course, we'll probably talk about him in a little mm -hmm. bit. But we were looking for that receiver in the in the third round. But I think that really for the next, the third round and both fourth round picks, it was a position where the Ravens kind of, uh, I don't want to say lucked out, but they got great value with those three picks. And Adisa mm -hmm. Isaac was the first one they chose. Oh, I like that great value. And somebody else that is looking to hopefully bring great value to the Baltimore Ravens uh, is Devontae Walker, who the Baltimore Ravens selected uh, in the fourth round. Now, I remember going into the draft, me, I'm somebody, a team keep it clean, though. A lot of people know y'all, you know, I love to, I love receivers, 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 receivers. And I felt like going into the draft, the receiver that I wanted the Baltimore Ravens to get, even though I just figured it wasn't going to happen, it was Xavier Worthy. And the reason that I wanted them to get Xavier Worthy because he brought a different element of speed to this Baltimore Ravens offense. And I felt like with Lamar Jackson, that would be perfect for him. So he was had a receiver that can really just take off and go get uh, all those deep passes. But, of course, the Chiefs, they leapfrogged the Bills, traded with them to take them. Uh, and so it didn't end up happening. But Eric DeCosta said, oh, and Gravy, you wanted a receiver with some speed? Don't worry. I got you. Watch this. So with Tez Walker, um, besides his element of speed, well, actually including his element of speed, what else does he bring to Lamar Jackson, and how does he complement these other Baltimore Ravens wide receivers? I was with you as far as the fit. I think that there would have been a good argument for, okay, do we want a route runner? Do we want a, a yak guy? Or do we want someone to take the top off the defense? Or what kind of combination of skills do you want? Because – once you get past the first round or maybe even the top half of the first round, a lot of guys do some things really, really well and other mm -hmm. things need development. So I, I like Devontae Walker fit in Graven because he gives the Ravens something that I don't want to say they don't have. Zay Flowers can go deep. Bateman can go deep. Mm -hmm. But it's Devontae Walker's specialty, and he's really good downfield. Now, what you don't get is the entire route tree. I think that that's going to take developing. But I get a little frustrated when I hear people say that Devontae Walker can't run routes because it's such a blanket statement. Mm. So anything one cut where you just put your foot in the ground and make a you know, 45 degree angle turn or maybe even closer to a 90 degree angle turn. Devontae Walker, from what I've seen, it's a small sample size, of course, in college, but he's very good at. It. So you look at a post routes, a corner routes, uh, a dig or a crosser. He's, he's good at those. He puts his foot in the ground and he can create separation from the cornerback. What he needs work on is his hip, hip sink and being able to run those comebacks and turnarounds. But the Ravens have Zay Flowers for that. They were very effective with it. Bateman's shown the ability to run, run those routes. So with Devontae Walker, I think that his pure production as far as like catches and yards won't measure what he could bring to the table to this offense. Because if, he's, if he hits on one of these post routes, or one of these go balls in Graven, then teams are going to have to start respecting that. And it's just going to get the safety's attention. The safety's going to have to play a little bit deeper. 
going to have to turn his hips a little bit sooner. And then that's going to open up things for, I mean, think about Mark and likely work in the middle of the field in the, that 15 to 20 yard area of, you know, past the line of scrimmage. The Ravens have plenty of weapons for that. We needed a guy who could go get the ball deep and Devontae yeah. Walker can do that. I love it, man. Uh, I love it. Um, the other day uh, on Netflix, there was a roast of Tom Brady. Um, they just all people, all sorts of people's on there. It was Kevin Hart. There was Drew Bledsoe. Uh, just a, a lot of people. They were getting on Tom Brady like crazy. Um, but it reminded me of his day because they talked about his last playing days. Obviously, he spent the majority of his time with the New England Patriots. Uh, and then his last couple of years with the Bucks. A couple of years ago, um, I had the pleasure of being able to attend the Ravens Bucks game, um, and because you know I'm down here in South Florida, so it was a quick trip up the road to Tampa. The Baltimore Ravens they took a quick trip up the road to Tampa as well, but they selected T.J. Tampa, uh, a cornerback who a lot of people feel is the steal of the draft. What does he bring? Because the Baltimore Ravens, when you think about their secondary, they uh, they could be almost considered loaded because you already got Marlon Humphrey. You got Brandon Stevens, just a cornerback alone. Uh, you got Arthur Millett. You got Ardarius Washington. You got Jalen Armour Davis. You got Pepe Williams. Uh, but now you drafted Nate Wiggins and uh, you drafted TJ Tampa as well. So how does he fit in as a Baltimore Raven? And what kind of role do you expect him to have? I think his greatest strength is his versatility and mm. another guy, almost like Adisa Isaac. It's very, I think comparable, comparable, but comparable, but they play different positions. So mm. what I mean by that, when I watched TJ Tampa at Iowa state by the second game, I had a really good idea that the coaches trust them because he was playing on the right side, the left side, he was playing in the slot. He's playing off coverage. He was playing press coverage. So after a few games of watching these guys, you're like, okay, TJ Tampa is the guy that they're basically saying, go cover this receiver on this team, no matter where he goes. He was following them at the NFL level. I don't quite see him as that kind of, you know, lockdown cornerback. Uh, the receivers are just so good, but what TJ Tampa gives you is versatility. He mm. was comfortable in any kind of assignment and graven pressing. He's got offensive lineman length type arms, like 32 plus inches. We talked about arm length earlier. TJ Tampa is extremely long. I would say if there was one thing that dropped him, it would be his long speed. I know that he's been clocked at over 20 miles an hour, but it doesn't always show up on tape as recovery speed like in Nate Wiggins where it's just impossible to, to run with that guy. But TJ Tampa is very tough. He's very assignment sound. There will be receivers that he can match up with in the NFL. And I think for this year, it just gives us a really good security blanket because you know mm. how things go. Yep. And that's secondary, man. Somebody's going to get banged up in this time. And uh, we're not, maybe we want a, Nate Wiggins to do this and that or cover this type of receiver. And mm -hmm. TJ Tampa can come in and supplement the guys. If we needed him in the slot, he could probably play there. We want him off corner. He can pl probably play there. And we have press corners like Brandon and Marlon and Nate Wiggins can do all that. So I think Nate Wiggins will, uh, has a chance to play a big role this year if things go mm -hmm. wrong. And in the future, it'll give us flexibility to where we can look for a specific kind of corner as uh, TJ Tampa finds his role. So, again, another really good value pick. And uh, I think uh, Eric Costa said it would have been irresponsible not to take him or something like that. Uh, and that's the kind of value that TJ Tampa brings. I, You know, you never know with these kind of things because, like, the draft grades are all based on where people had them ranked and the consensus, consensus boards and filling mm -hmm. needs. But I have a feeling when we look back on them, we'll be like, yeah, we got ourselves a solid corner in the fourth round. And if you can get a solid player in the fourth round, you're you're hitting. You know, you're going to need those guys. Yeah, I like that. And I, I like to hit. Now, if you're a big boxing fan, um, with boxing, a lot of people, they either like the technical boxers, somebody like the, uh, the more powerful boxers. But one thing that occurs in boxing a lot of times that gets a lot of people excited is that knockout blow. And to really become a legend uh, as a boxer, a lot of times, not every time, you have to be somebody that will have delivered enough of those knockout blows. You, of course, got your Floyd Mayweather, so he's an exception. He's super, super technical. But you got guys like Mike Tyson. You got guys like Evander Holyfield, uh, Lennox Lewis. Uh, and then you got guys who delivered a knockout blow like Muhammad 
Ali. When it comes to knockout blows, the same can be said for NFL running backs because they can hit that knockout blow to really take a team out and close out a game. Rasheen Ali, he's somebody that the Baltimore Ravens drafted, and this guy was like, <laughs> what did he score? Like, I, some crazy amount of touchdowns. I think it was like 50-something touchdowns. I forgot what the exact number is, but it, it was wild. Um, but Rasheen Ali, he's somebody that looks like a home run hitter, uh, somebody that is very, very explosive, um, somebody that can deliver that knockout punch. Uh, but what, what – because we got a Derrick Henry. We have a Justice Hill. Keaton Mitchell, we'll see when he comes back. But for Rasheen Ali, where can he sort of creep into the Ravens running back room? I think he can make his way into the room pretty quickly, actually. Hmm. Now they The Ravens do trust Justice Hill. I mean, obviously, they have him active on game day for, mm -hmm. you know, to play gunner and special teams, and now kickoffs are back, so... You can expect to see Justice Hill uh, maintain his role. But what stood out with Rasheen Ali to me, something I feel very strongly about in my evaluations, is his ability to protect the quarterback. And you know how important that is. Uh, what was the running back that fell out, uh, the BYU running back that uh, – and I think he went to the Ra Raiders, but he a great runner, but couldn't protect the quarterback from a few years ago. Uh, Rasheen Ali is, is the opposite. I saw him, uh, NC State is one of the all 22 videos that I had taking care of business against the ACC team. Um, very physical. He IDs it well in Graven, and his technique is good. So if he wants to cut you, he can cut you. If he wants to take you up top, put hands on you and protect the quarterback, he can do that. And then also coming out the backfield, it's it's not no body catching. Like he catches things away from his body in front. Uh, you know, to make sure that the defenders can't get an arm on it or hand on it, rather. Mm. He's really good in pass protection, third down back. I think that that is his future here because Justice Hill is signed, you know, was a two-year deal. So maybe it allows you to move on from Justice Hill or give mm. you insurance for Justice Hill. Okay. Derrick Henry, obviously, Graven, Derrick Henry can play on any down. Um, but he's going to need a rest. Like, if you want to run the uh, – we got the ball, two-minute drill, no timeouts, that kind of thing where Justice Hill was on the field in those situations, mm -hmm. maybe that's Rasheen Ali now because mm -hmm. sometimes Justice Hill's size works against him in pass pro, like we saw in that last game of the season, um, where Justice Hill is more than willing. He's very aggressive. He sees the blitz, but sometimes Justice's size works against him. Mm -hmm. Rasheen Ali, like in Graven, a lot of these uh, running backs that come out of college, that's the hardest thing to project is, yeah, we can see him run a lot on tape, but – Protecting the quarterback, that's a different animal at the NFL. Remember, J.K. Dobbins couldn't get on the field at first because mm. of the pass pro aspect. Like, mm. Rasheen Ali is way ahead of where most college running backs are at protecting the quarterback. you got to protect Lamar Jackson. Um, you have to be able to catch the ball out of the backfield. So, Keaton a little undersized, Justice a little undersized for pass pro. Derrick Henry, you know, you want him eating as much as possible but also resting. So, Rasheen Ali, I see is like – He's going to be a very useful back. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't as sold on his explosiveness, to be honest with you. I don't see like a real fast, fast back as far as play speed. I don't see like a, a great ability to break tackles or a great power ability. I think he's good at all those things. But mm -hmm. I think where he's going to make his money in the NFL is on third downs, and the Ravens could use some insurance in that area. Yeah, that's a really good point. I didn't think about that. Now, um, something that a lot of Ravens fans, they didn't think about either was them drafting a quarterback. Uh, in this draft, but the Ravens did that with selecting uh, Devin Leary. Um, what's your thoughts on that pick? So I'm in, I'm in the minority on this. I mean, uh -huh. I, when Sarah was on, she, she even like disagreed with me politely, but like my thoughts on it is the Ravens have tried to replicate with Lamar's backups, um, you know, with Tyrell Huntley specifically, and even Trace uh -huh. McSorley had some legs where they wanted a quarterback who could, be almost like Lamar. I, I want to mm -hmm. choose my words carefully because yeah, there's, yeah, no, there's no other Lamar, let's face right. it, but have the mobility threat like Lamar. And I like Devin Leary because people sleep on Lamar Jackson's arm. I want somebody who can sling the ball like Lamar too. So like, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if something happens to Lamar and he has to miss a couple of games and we need to win a couple of games, 
How about somebody who can take a shot to Devontae Walker down the field or Zay Flowers down the field? Mm. How about when it's third and eight and we need a conversion? You know, like with, with Tyler Huntley and some of the other quarterbacks that we've had, it was just like, look, we're going to throw a five-yard route and hope our guy can get the extra two or three yards. Like we didn't trust them to sling the rock. Devin mm. Leary had turnover issues in college, but he can sling the rock. And then the one thing I'm relying on here is T. Martin. Uh, mm. I believe that, you know, since T. Martin was kind of tasked with finding a backup quarterback, one that he liked, and he went to bat for Devin Leary and believes in Devin Leary, that's enough for me because these guys spend a lot of times in the meeting rooms. They spend a lot of times together. Uh, so mm. if T. Martin feels like, all right, I got something with this young man on the football field, but he'll also fit in with Lamar and Josh Johnson really well, uh, we, uh, we'll, we'll be a good group together, then I like that. So I'm he said with like with Greg Roman, yeah, the read option was a big part of the game. All these Lamar keepers and you know, fake handoff to the running back, and I'm gonna decide to keep it, read the defensive end. But the read options have slowly gone away under Todd Munkin. You know, we're not using Lamar's designed runs as much. His most of his yards are coming on scrambles. So I you know, if the, the read option isn't a part of our initial game plan as much, I'm like, mm -hmm. give me the quarterback who can throw it. So I've realized a lot of people disagree with that. They were like, Well, we're gonna have to change the offense. I don't I think a lot of that's overblown. I think if you got a quarterback who can throw as a backup, that's a pretty good thing. Oh, okay. I, I like your thought process on Larry because it's – I didn't think about that. Because, yeah, when the Ravens, they signed uh, Emory Jones um, a couple of days ago, I was thinking, okay, yeah, I, I think he could really give Larry and even possibly Josh Johnson, depending on how quickly he can grasp the playbook, Emory Jones could give them some competition for that backup QB role because he's somebody that – does have that mobility, and, and he just reminded me of a much less polished version of Lamar Jackson. Um, but when you talk about Leary and just his arm strength, and, and of course that is something that I agree, it is something that has been underrated with Lamar Jackson for a while, even before he had even bulked up um, from last year and the year before, because um, that's, I feel like his arm strength got talked about a lot more then, but he's always had a little cannon, uh, even when he was Lemma. Uh, and now he's slim again, so I don't expect his uh, his arm strength to go anywhere. Um, but, yeah, with Leary, the points you bring out about that, just having a quarterback that the Ravens would trust uh, if something were to happen to Lamar. Obviously, we don't want anything to happen to Lamar, uh, but we would still love to see the backup quarterback in some games because that would mean we blowing the teams out. Right. Now, um, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, and I, I understand the argument. Like if Emory Jones is a better player, a better fit, keep him, man, keep him. I, I'm just painting the other side and I'm not doing it just to be contrarian or to, you know, be the guy. I just really want a backup quarterback who we trust to be able to air it out, you know, because mm -hmm. in those games with your mm -hmm. backups, yeah, like, okay, you're going to be behind probably, you know what I mean? We're not putting up 30 points. It's a backup in there. One big play one bomb could really help change things instead of trying to manage the game so much. So that's just my personal opinion. We'll see how it works out. It's hard to hit on quarterbacks. You know what I mean? So maybe Devin Leary is not an NFL quarterback, not an NFL backup, but I just like the, I like the style. And if coach Martin likes him, T likes him. I like him. Uh, and I like that. Now um, these last two picks, uh, Nick Samek, um, the center, of course, Baltimore Ravens got Tyler Linderbaum, but, Stay ready so you don't got to get ready. Um, do you feel like he's NFL ready? And if Tyler Linderbaum were to go down at all, he'll be able to step in and step up? Or do you feel like he's more of a developmental guy, especially being a late-round draft pick? How, how do you feel about Nick Smith? Well, I like the fact that he's a pure center. So he's mm -hmm. gotten a lot of time at uh, Michigan State calling the game and you know being kind of like the leader of the offensive line like you expect a center to be, to be able mm -hmm. to be. Uh, as far as his... Like play strength, I think needs a lot of work, but is his ability to call the game to snap the ball well? You know that don't take that for granted. After what we right. went through a few years ago, <laughs> he, he's he's all good on that. And then, quite frankly, with those three interior offensive linemen, they're getting help. They're helping each other a lot. There's two guys in there to block. So mm -hmm. when you got a monster like Michael Pierce or Travis Jones, or maybe you want to double up on Matabike to stop him from like these guys are helping each other. So if he's needs development on his play strength and his pass protection, or he's, you know, not great in the run game. He's not going to move people to me. He's, he's more like a steady player who could come in right away and, um, you know, kind of 
not, you wouldn't miss a beat with like leadership or have a converted guard in there who's never really snapped the ball. He's he's comfortable with that. So from that mm -hmm. angle, I like it. And if he turns out to be a good player for us, uh, you, you know, in the seventh round, you can't ask for more than a, a good backup. That would be that would be nice. Yeah, that's that's true. And speaking about backups, because the Ravens are already set at the safety position. Obviously, you got Super Duper Kyle, who can literally do everything. Uh, Kyle Hamilton, and then you got Marcus Williams, who, when healthy, he's been really good in my opinion. But that's just been the thing these past two years; he just hasn't been healthy. Um, so it's always good to have more safeties than less. Uh, Snoozy Kane, where can he fit in? with this safety rotation, if at all. I'm, yeah, I'm interested to see. I think there's a true battle between him and Bo Brady because remember, Sanusi Kane, what was it, like eight picks before the draft ended? Um, yeah, we picked at the end of the seventh. So mm. you know, there's like uh, not very much difference between Sanusi Kane and, you know, Bo Brady being a high, highly coveted undrafted free agent. So – I think that the talent level of, of those two are very even. I actually had Bo Braid on my board uh, much higher. I liked him, and I'm not a Terps fan, not a Maryland fan, so it wasn't a homer pick. I just mm -hmm. like Bo Braid's play speed and his toughness and all. Uh, Sanusi Kane, from what I've watched, he plays more like a, a linebacker than a DB. So I could see him being like a, a backup plan for, say, Trenton Simpson. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's third down and, and nine. And Trenton Simpson say he's been struggling in pass coverage, picking up, uh, excuse me, all the action going on behind him, going on around him. Trenton Simpson still needs some development in that area. Uh, if that's the case, then Sanusi Kane, I think, because he's not like the quickest player. I don't see great play speed, but he's really tough and he's a really good tackler. So that's what I like about Sanusi Kane. Uh, plays more, like I said, like a linebacker where Bo Braid has that DB type look, DB type speed. Uh, Sanusi Kane is more like a more like a brawler type style. So I think it'll be really interesting in the preseason mm -hmm. to see Sanusi Kane, to see Bo Braid. And that would be a position, quite frankly, in Graven, where I'd like to see the Ravens bring in a vet uh, because I don't want to mess around with Kyle sometimes is going to play the slot. He's going to be our weapon. I want some – and then Marcus has missed time. I want some insurance on the back end. Uh, with this group, I would have liked to address safety earlier in the draft, but mm -hmm. you know, obviously you can't have it all, you know, right. but, um, but yeah, I would like to see a veteran presence and see how Sanusi Kane fits in. I think is you know, a questionable, all these guys really, but especially when you're talking about a seventh round draft pick, how he's going to translate to the NFL. Ah, that's a really, really good point. So we'll see how that works itself out. But my guy, Jason, from Hell it up films. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you very, very much. Uh, y'all make sure y'all check out his channel. The link to it is down below in the description. Any closing words that you want to give the team keep it clean before we get out of here? I do. I do. I really appreciate uh, team keep clean your videos. I've, I've told you before that sometimes when I wake up and I don't feel like dealing with like social media and Twitter and checking it out, I'll see if engravings has, has a video so I can get the news broken to me uh, slowly. <laughs> uh, I will plug this on my channel though. During the off season, it's a lot of downtime and a lot of nothing. Mm -hmm. um, I, so on my channel, I have highlights of not just like the wide receivers and running backs, but the defensive player, the offensive lineman. So mm -hmm. if you want to find up uh, Josh Jones clip, you can find a cut up of him. Or if you want to see Daniel file Lele or Ben Cleveland uh, guys like that, you can find that on my channel to really help keep you busy during the summertime when there isn't a lot going on. So that's, that's one of the things I'm proud of on my channel is, that there are a lot of highlights of Lamar and the wide receivers and all that other stuff. My highlights aren't as good as, as some of the other people out there, but when it comes to offensive linemen, defensive players, uh, new guys, stuff like that, you can find that on huddle it up film. So I, and thank you so much. I always appreciate you engraving. Oh yeah, for sure. Well, team keep it clean again. Make sure you check out my guy, huddle it up films. Again, the link is down below in the description and we out.